Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Today, we're going to be mowing this beautiful green weed patch, also known as our front lawn. We're going to be using our 1955 Sears Craftsman Lawn Mower. It's a two-cycle power products engine rated at one and a half horsepower. So anyway, we'll get it started and be back in a sec. Well, our starting procedure is, the first thing we do is turn on the fuel. Then we'll flip on the choke. Right. Okay, just put the rope on and wrap this around. Put your foot right here. see we got our nice weed patch slash lawn mode. Old mower did a really good job. <clears throat> this thing has a lot of unusual th features about it. Um, the main thing is that the deck is cast magnesium and originally was for lawn boys because in 1952 when lawn boys were on the market Sears sold them and Sears sold three grades of tools and equipment they had good, better, and best. And so the best would have been a lawn boy lawnmower. And this would be the better. It has the really good deck, but it has a cheaper engine, the power products, one and a half horsepower. And then the low end model, just the good one would be the same motor, but a cheapened up version of it with a steel deck. And here's a power products engine. It's basically the same as on the mower. Uh, they made a lot of varieties of these motors, some good and some not so good. Now this one is later than this one, and this one on the connecting rod actually has bearings in it. And on the bottom line cheapo mower, the connecting rod just had a bushing, and so they stated that you needed to run 16 to 1 oil and gas mix. And you better because if you try to run modern oils in them, they'll just blow up. But the features on them, things that they changed on them, this originally would have been for a lawnmower except for the muffler because it's close here. So it was on some kind of a power equipment because of the pulleys. The lawn boy, the muffler would be down here, or the lawnmower I should say. And then it's a float feed carburetor. These were used on go-karts sideways like this, but of course it would have had to have a pumper carb on it. And they made over 56 different crankshafts for these for different applications. So the difference between these two is that this one has a mechanical governor built down in the bottom of the motor. And this one has a flyweight underneath the flywheel. And on the later one jet they had an air vane, they had a little metal piece of it would move back and forth with the airflow as the engine speed and it would change the throttle. But these little engines, there were lots of them, they were the largest seller of two cycle engines for years and years. So I wanted to show you something real quick, be right back. Okay, this is a 1953 Lonboy manual. Open it up, you'll see that 
the deck and everything is exactly the same as this 55 model. Now if you look down on the bottom here, that's the muffler that they use for the Lawn Boy Iron Horse engine which is different from this. But the front mark here, the grill mark, and the body and the wheels and stuff is absolutely identical. So that's how Sears would deal making good, better, and best. Well, I just wanted to talk about Sears again and the product line. Like I say, they had good, better, and best. So this would be considered a best. This is a 1954 Lawn Boy. And Sears started selling Lawn Boys right from the point where they started making lawn mowers. This has the Iron Horse engine in it, which is a really good engine. And the alloy deck. And this one, which we just mowed with, is their mid-grade Craftsman. There again, it has the alloy deck and stuff, but it was actually a lawn boy deck from the earlier years that they used. They cast the Craftsman name on it. And so this would be the better. And this would be good. Now this is not a Sears lawnmower. This is a Brenner. But uh, the difference with this is it has a stamped steel deck and really cheaply built. This thing is actually a little bit better than a lot of them because it has a hand throttle on it here. And it has a Clinton engine in it, which a Clinton engine is better than a Power Products engine like on this. It costs more money, but just typical. And then Sears had different names for the different quality of stuff. If this were a Sears lawnmower, it would be called a Dunlap. And you don't hardly find any Dunlap stuff because it was of marginal quality. In fact, all the stuff that I have, the only thing I have that has Dunlap on it is an axe. So anyway, you know, how the rotary lawnmower took off is that RPM Manufactory, which became Lawn Boy, was really the early large seller, controlled the market for a long time, and then everybody and their dog got into the market like this one. Now the Brenner here, you can find almost no information about the company, but prior to World War II they made tin toys like this. They made little stamped tin toys. This isn't a Brenner, this is probably a dot. The idea is the same, it's just very simple stamped tin. And it's a very simple stamped deck. And, uh, so anyway, well, we'll come back a bit and talk about chainsaws. Okay, well, we're here to talk about the type of chainsaws that I collect. And this one in particular is one that, it's a Brand X one I'd never heard of before. It's called a Dynamark. And it's a private label saw. And so rather than go through this thing, what I found out about it and everything like that today. I'm going to have a little contest to see how sharp you collectors are out there. So this saw, like I say, was a private label saw. And the only clue I'm going to give you, it's in between 30 and 40 cc's. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a contest. And we're going to give away your choice of a vintage axe head. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have it open to comments until September 3rd, 5 p.m. West Coast time. And whoever guesses the correct on this will have the choice of, like I say, neither one of these axe heads. So I'll just briefly talk about this. It, it's odd because it's uh, the chain on it is a quarter inch and it's skip tooth which I've never seen before. The other few other saws that have quarter inch chain just has a standard chain on it but anyway I'm a cute little rascal. So anyway I want to talk now about chainsaws that I collect. My, originally what I did was not collecting saws, I just 
got one in 1980 and started using them and you know people over time would come to the shop and say hey I got an old chainsaw would you want it and tired of tripping on it and of course I always said yes but the thing is that back then it's been quite some time ago stuff wasn't collectible so anyway the first type of saw I collect are saws that I use on a regular basis McCullough's are the number one saw that I use. I uh, have a couple of these with the 24 inch bars on them and that'll do just about any tree that I have on the property. Most trees are a little bit smaller than that and these will cut 24 inch tree with no problem. And they're a mid-sized saw. These are 60 cc and that's what I mainly use is in a 60 to 70 cc range. So like I say, that's the number one saw that I use. If I need something bigger, I get a 70cc Promax 700 with a 28 inch bar on it. And these are really powerful saw. This is an excellent saw, but I don't use it that much because the trees I have are generally not that big. And another saw that I use all the time is these little Mini Max. I've got several of them. This is an early version. These things are powerful, but they're finicky. You gotta deal with their little glitches to make them usable all the time. But size for size, these are more powerful than any other mini saw I've ever used. This is just a slightly bigger displacement, but it's a Kiritz Echo, sold as a John Deere. And the thing I like about this saw it's smoother and quieter than the McCulloch's and so I'm going to do some extended cutting on you know small stuff. This really is a nice little saw. Had very little use on it. I'll go back and watch some of our older videos and explain why. The second brand of saw that I use a lot are my Pioneers. These are big powerful saws. This is a 66cc and uh, they have uh, made in Canada, but they're every bit as good as the McCullough's. And so the only thing is that parts are a lot harder to find for them. The McCullough's made so many saws that when they shut down there was still a lot of parts around and so they've been dispersed, but it's still relatively easy to find parts for the Max, but not these so much. But you can see this is in excellent condition. Then the second type of saw that I collect or just because saws. And here's a perfect example. The saws that I use are mostly in the 70s and 80s. And the just because saws, just because I like them and I find them, drag them home occasionally, are made in the late 50s through the mid 60s. And this is one of those. This is made by Bolins Corporation, which made garden tractors and all kinds of stuff. But just like vintage lawnmowers and a lot of other things, all kinds of companies got into making these. And this one was made by the main company. It's called FMC, which is Food Machinery Company. So. They make food processing equipment and then they were selling these chainsaws and for a Brand X saw this is one of the nicer ones the way it's laid out. I mean it's got very nice castings. Pretty good size saw. It's a 77cc use the Power Products AH47 which is 77cc. Got my favorite crummy Fairbanks more starter. This morning when I pulled it out it was working. No it don't. And this will be a winter project, but the chain was pretty rusty and tight on it, so this is what I use. Just start soaking them, and every couple of days I'll put some on there, and yeah, there you go. This morning it wouldn't move. So anyway, you can see it's good. nicely laid out. It's got a chrome cover over the air cleaner. It has a round dry paper element. 
induction sides over here, a manual oiler here. Fuel knob is right here. So it's really easy laid out. Kill switch is right out in the open here. So these are the saws, like I say, I just kind of like to collect. But I am not a rabid collector like a lot of people. I uh, started collecting when people were giving it to me years ago. And so over time, I'd see one here and there, pick it up. And so I'm what's called an accumulator instead of a hogger. So my sock collection isn't that big, but I have some real interesting stuff. And here's another brand X saw. It's really one of the best ones. This is a Sears David Bradley. There again, it uses a Power Products engine. Got the Fairbanks Smore starter. Works perfect as you can see. There it caught finally. <laughs> but anyway, those Fairbanks starters always need work. This is a 77cc saw also. It's a gear reduction. It's model 360. When I first got this thing, I thought, well, it must be three horsepower and 60 pounds because it's a real hog. But it's the first saw that Sears sold that you could run it upside down or sideways, so 360 degree. And the dogs on it is stamp 10, has double dogs. And the thing is interesting, you can take the bar off of the chain and put it on the inside, or you can even run double bars on them. But uh, the idea was that when it's on the outside, you can get right down to the ground and cut a stump. And on the other side, you just use it as a regular chainsaw. But it's all die cast aluminum. Here's your manual oil pump, throttle lock, fuel, ignition. So, but like I say, they're really well made. They're just really heavy. And since I like Sears stuff, I've got all kinds of weird Sears stuff I've collected over the years. You've got chainsaws and bicycles and motorcycles. Here's another little Sears saw. This was made by the L.M. Cox Company, which made model airplane motors. And then the last type of saw that I collect are the vintage saws, like this one. This is made by, in Canada by Industrial Engineering Limited. And right here it says Super Pioneer 52, so that means it was made in 1952. This particular model was made in 1951 and 2. And this is one of Pioneer's first so called lightweight one man saws. It's pretty heavy, but it's got a lot of neat features on it. One is like on the bar here. These had float feed carburetors. And so you couldn't turn them on the side. So they have a lever right up here. You push that. And you rotate your bar so you can cut a tree off sideways. When you're ready to start cutting again, you can click it back and there you go. And this saw is an 80 0.5 cc. Got a recoil starter. It uses a cable instead of a rope. A lot of early saws did. There's your manual oiling button right here. Ignition switch here. And choke. Of course your throttle is right here too. You can see the throttle shaft and linkage moving there. Pretty simply laid out. But that was a saw that was advanced for its time. So anyway, those are the type of saws that I collect. And uh, you can see that there's a vast variety of different things. Chainsaw collecting, there's something for everyone. You know, a lot of people like certain brands. I like the McCullough's and the Pioneers because they've lasted forever and always perform and rarely need any repairs. And then there's something else that I ran into at a tractor show. You know, talk a lot about use what you have. 
and there's a guy there selling these bar covers and they're old fire hose. So, you know, I mean, basically what do you do with old fire hose? Well, here's a perfect example of what to do. So anyway, he had a mark for different lengths. And uh, they work really good. And, uh, let me put one on the Pioneer here and show you. Because I had been using cardboard when I go to the shows, but it looks kind of crummy. and So I uh, was going to make some wood ones, but it takes a lot of time and stuff. Just let me slide around there. Just like that. So anyway, that'll be it for today. So remember, vintage is better than the new stuff. It's lots of fun to collect and use. We'll see you on the next video.